What's up everyone? Sam here from bitebybite.com and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to deal with when you get stuck at work. And I'm going to show you a rule called the 30 minute rule that will allow you to ask the right questions of the right people and get those problems resolved as quickly as possible without annoying everyone else on your team. And if you want tons more videos just like this on software engineering careers and coding interview prep, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. We're releasing new videos every week. All right, so I don't know about you, but when I was working as a software engineer, I experienced a lot of cases where I got totally stuck on a problem and had no idea how to solve it. Can you relate to any of this? You get stuck on a problem and you don't really want to bug someone else on your team, right? You want to figure it out on your own because you're like, this is probably a really stupid problem and you don't want to be that person who goes to someone else on your team and they're like, oh, obviously this is the solution and you look kind of dumb, right? So in this video, I want to show you a specific approach and strategy that you can take to make sure that you are balancing that, not bothering your team, not asking stupid questions, but also not wasting tons of time because you don't want to come to your manager at the end of the week and say, yeah, I was stuck on this problem for the entire week. Right, so I'm going to show you a strategy that I call the 30 minute rule that is going to help you to avoid these sorts of situations. And this process takes four steps. Step number one is that I want you to actually spend 30 minutes on the problem. Whatever the problem is, whatever you're stuck on, whether it's a bug or whether it's something not compiling properly or whether it's you know, just the setup on your machine, spend 30 minutes trying to figure it out on your own. This could mean looking at documentation. If your company has good internal documentation, that's a really good place to start. If anyone has done a tutorial or if someone showed you how to do something in the past, these are all good places to start. But spend 30 minutes trying to solve the problem on your own. This is really, really important because if you don't spend the time solving a problem on your own, you become that person who's always asking questions that no one really wants to help you with because they're like, did you even try to do anything? Right? They get really frustrated when you ask questions because it feels like you're just asking them to do all the work for them. So spend 30 minutes on your own. If you're debugging, create breaks, breakpoints, create print statements in your code. Kind of test and try and narrow down as much as you can what the problem is and where the problem is. Because what you want to be able to do is when you get into the next couple steps, you want to be able to be very precise about what the problem is that you're facing and, how to, and where you need a solution. Right? You don't want to go to someone and say, hey, this isn't working, help me fix it. You want to say, hey, so my code is erroring. I'm getting like a null pointer exception on this line. I've tested this, this, and this, and it's not working. Do you have any advice? And so step number one is, again, spend 30 minutes trying to solve the problem yourself. Now, step number two is you want to choose the right person to ask for help. So once you've identified, once you've spent 30 minutes on it and you still are unable to solve the problem, who is the right person to ask for help to solve this problem? And one of the best things that you can do here is you can think about, can I rotate through different people on my team? Can I ask different people for help so that I'm not always bugging the same person? Hopefully it's not like every day that you're needing to ask people for help, but even if it is, then asking different people for different problems and ideally getting people to help you on their specific area of expertise is going to help spread out the load and keep you from bothering people. And the best way to actually ask someone and make sure that you're not bothering them or interrupting them in what they're doing is to use some sort of asynchronous medium to ask them for help. So one of the things that I really like to do is I will slack someone and, be, and say something along the lines of, hey, I have a question for you when you have a minute, right? You're not asking them, you're not going over to their desk and interrupting them and telling them, hey, I really need help with this thing while they're concentrated on something else. Someone's concentrating on something, they're not going to check those Slack messages and that's okay. You want to have a backup project or backup work that you can be working on so that if this takes time, you can do something else. But using that asynchronous medium is going to be a great way to avoid bothering people in the way of like interrupting them when they're in the middle of something. Step number three is where we take what we discovered in step number one. Remember, we spent 30 minutes working on the problem, really digging in and trying to identify what isn't working and where specifically is the problem. And so step number three, when we are going to ask this person for help, we want to show them what we did. How did we try to solve this problem ourselves? This is good for several reasons. One, it's going to make it easier for them to actually help us solve the problem, right? Because we've done a lot of the work for them. We've done a lot of the things that they might have to do on their own if they wanted to solve the problem. And so number one, it's going to help them to help us solve the problem. 
But number two, it's going to show them that we put in the work. We put in the work to attempt to solve this problem on our own. We put in the work to try and discover where is the issue. The more specific we get in our question, the more it shows that we actually put in effort and we're not just bothering them because we can't be bothered to solve this problem on our own. So it's really important that you demonstrate the work and that you ask as specific questions as possible. This is something that you really want to do in general in life is the more specific you ask a question, the more specific that question is, the better an answer that you're going to get. And now step number four, the final step here is that we want to do a postmortem. Right? We want to do a postmortem once we've gotten this problem solved. Maybe we showed the person on our team what was going on and like just like that, they knew what the solution was. Maybe it was because there was some sort of configuration that we weren't aware of. Maybe there was some file somewhere or something that was getting built that we weren't familiar with or something else that prevented us from being able to solve the problem on our own. Maybe it was actually a really hard problem and they weren't able to solve it either. And in that case, we are going to have to sort of put this as like an open ticket, right? And we're going to have to figure out a way to solve it. But we can think about, oh, who else could I ask? How could I repeat this process? Maybe we discover that, oh, well, it was just this stupid little bug. And I don't know why I didn't see it. But whatever the problem was, we want to do a postmortem to identify how we can avoid making this mistake again. Because this is one of, the, one of those cases where one of the things that's going to bug people more than anything else is when you ask them the same, problem, same question multiple times. Right? The worst thing that you can do when interacting with someone else is to show them that you weren't really listening to them by asking them the same thing again. So if we can do a postmortem and keep track of what was the mistake that we made, where did we get stuck, what was the solution, and keep track of those, one, it helps documentation on the team. We can document this for everyone and put together a process, right? Because we're probably not the first person and we're probably not going to be the last person to face this thing. And two, we can keep track for our own records so that we don't make that mistake again. And this is how you're going to make it much more pleasant and you're going to become a much more enjoyable person to work with when you make mistakes or when you get stuck on things in your work because you are asking the right kind of questions, you're putting in the work necessary and you're the kind of person that people want to help because you are actually going to make a change and listen to what they say. And so with that, that's how you use the 30 minute rule. Remember, you want to start by spending 30 minutes trying to solve the problem on your own. Two, make sure that you're asking the right person to help you solve the problem. Three, show them that you put in that work. Show them that you really did the thing that you're asking them for help with and that you're not just asking them to solve all your problems for you. And four, do a postmortem. Make sure that you're not gonna have to ask that same question again. And with that, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed this video and want tons more videos just like this, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us to grow the channel and we're releasing new videos every week. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.